Hey, hello everybody, good morning. Today is Tuesday, uh, April 9, 7.35 a.m. Eastern Time. Just let's review the market wrap and compare what we have in the book right now, okay? So, so, so uh, yesterday, you know, I started the market wrap with like a different approach. I start you know, talk about, you know, the, the volatility, the VIX. VIX, remember, is volatility uh, calculated for 30 days. Okay, so uh, we saw only one spike in VIX at the open. Is where, you know, Vana starts at the open, go up to 10.30, 11 a.m. Uh, and then you saw a spike because you open at 5,211. And we drop further up to 5,198. You know, in the Vana period, so we saw a spike, but right away, you know, VIX start to sink, to slide, to go down. Even after close, when you have the charm, of course, that was, yesterday was a Monday, and we don't have OPEX this week. Usually, we don't have charm at the close. Uh, but in, in consequently, you know, we didn't saw any spike in volatility at the close. And we back dash again, 5,210, 11, and then we drop down. And we, they melt down, they, they sold off, and market closed at 5,202, below 5,210. And consequently, the VIX is still sliding. Okay? Still sliding. Didn't show any spike. Of course, that we expect that. But when you, we, we, we see, you know, VIX sliding, usually, you know, you see, you see like a squeeze in some point. Could be today, could be tomorrow, right? But market don't, don't show us any stress so far, even with a sold, a sell-off at the close, right? And breaking down, a important support, a, vo a important volatility skill support that was 5,205. But implied volatility also is really slow. Not slow, sorry, it's really low, right? And consequently, it didn't impact the VIX. Uh, anyway, uh, economic agenda today is really calm. It's no, not, some, not something to be worried, it's not something that tends you know, to move the market. Volatility skill is still bearish, but also really low. Basically, bulls and also bears have been pay, paid off. If you guys, you know, check like 45 days uh, option contracts. Let's give you an example about 5,380 puts, right? You guys know that I bought the put and my average price was 189. And I sold exactly here when you see this spike. And the contract went up to 194, but I sold per 192.50. Right, check it out how much cost such contract right now. Suppose it be trading at 180 something. Why? Because the inflow imply volatility is really, is really, really low. So, consequently. Let me put June, June, June 28.
Hold on, folks, a little bit slow, refresh. Look how many open contracts we have in put contracts at 5k and also in the coconut. Anyway, let's go go and check 4380. See, uh, the only order that uh, printed, or the last order that printed was mine when I sold at 192.50. Just go back to the closing group and check it out. And look how much already depreciated. So it's trading below 109. And the market so far is trading at 5,209. Uh, and remember that I bought this on Friday for one, 189 was my average cost, right? And we are trading below the, the price that I bought. And the price, you know, is also below the price that I bought. And, I, and also below the price that I sold. Why? Because the market doesn't have volatility. Consequently, you know, even in, in, in calls are the same. In calls are the same. Consequently, you know, uh, dealers are not rewarding bulls and even bears. Because the volatility, the implied volatility is really, really low. It's really, really low. So anyway, let's go back to the market. Uh, Stretch. So we talk about the VIX, we talk the volatility skill is still bearish. In fact, it's, it's very low uh, implied volatility. So it's still showing, it's still bearish, it's still bear, it's a bearish smear, not bullish at all. Same levels, 5,200 supposed to be the support, 5,205 supposed to be the resistance, 5,200, 5,205 is a no volatility region. Uh, breaking up 5,205. Call supposed to be paid, paid and, and breaking down 5,200 could supposed to be paid off. So if you break up 5,205, the volatility skill uh, supposed to be changed from a bearish smear to a bullish smear. Okay, so those are the levels per volatility skill. But look how it's fluctuating comparing uh, how we had. Uh, how they left yesterday, and of course, this is supposed to be changing, especially because we have CPI. So, the volatility skill tends you know, tend to spike in some point, but still low, but higher than yesterday. Yesterday, for example, was below 13%, now is above 18%. It's slightly higher, but it's not something that caught our attention. Observe that you know uh, we trying to build a bullish smear here, but not yet, okay? Because we are trading with futures suggesting a five points gap up, so we supposed to be trading at nearby five thousand two hundred and ten. That's you know the level that usually suppress more and more the volatility, but it's still bearish as yes, but a little bit higher. Not too much difference. So, uh, and regarding the delta flow, the delta flow, the overall delta flow was bearish, what printed yesterday, but you have some divergence in some regions. Consequently, it's a good setup to see a squeeze. Not, not a squeeze, but at least like a green day. And back test 5,225 as what I'm expecting, okay? I'm really expecting, I really wish to see markets back test 5,205 and reject, okay? And reject. Because, you know, what I saw Friday looks like they set up, you know, uh, the levels for this week, something between 5,175 and 5,225.35, máximo 35. So this is, you know, what I'm looking for as a major support and a major resistance per 
what they left in the book on Friday. Of course, this could be changed. Okay? So, today I really expect a back test at 5,225 and a rejection. So, let's check how the delta is right now. So, the delta is still bearish. Okay, 5,200 is the major support. We have divergence, still the same, because you have now we what now is not more the plus GX 5,200 before war uh, before was right before. Ta -ta -ta, let me get the market wrapper before 5,200 was the plus GX. So now the plus GX moved to 5,220. Right, exactly where we saw the big no 25 was the biggest you know uh call allocation but is the region so they move the, the plus gx to 5220 so i really hope that i'm right to see a back test at 5225 if we close or oh, 5200 is flipping the gun is flipping so if you close above 5,220, or anyway, any point, any point above 5,200, so we will close in a positive gamma. So we are not talking more about squeeze tomorrow, right? Because you already flipped to a positive gamma. Okay, gotcha. So, but anyway, the only difference that we have yesterday regarding gamma and deltas is, five, now 5,225 show us a weakness. Since the delta is at 5,225, now, now we don't have, uh, it's, it's already updated, oh sorry, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, 25, yeah, it's updated, so we don't have it yet. So we don't have, you know, the delta, we don't, I don't have the delta yet over here, it's already updating, uh, so I cannot, you know, tell if, you know, have a big spike over here or not, but if you compare if yes, yeah, yes, was the major Allocations 5,225, but let's check at least in the open interest. So it's 5,000, it's, it's 500, ah, okay. It's 3,651. So this is the biggest open interest where we have gamma. Yes, that's the biggest, you know, uh, uh, level that uh, open interest that uh, in, in such strike that we have gamma followed by 5,200. So, consequently, you know, because it's still like a value, uh, 5,225 supposed to be like spiking as yesterday. But as you guys see, the GX already moved to 5,225. Okay? Different than yesterday that we saw at 5,220. So, we could do back test 5,225 and we could you see a Rejection? Yes. It's totally normal. And also, this is what I, I really expected. Why? Because if CPI come hot tomorrow, dealers tend to sell high. Right? If they want to sell, they, they, they want to sell high. And also, supposed to be affected DXY. So if you see a meltdown in the DXY today, you know, dealers want to buy low. Okay, this is you know market how market works, and consequently, if you close, you know, between 5,205 and 5,225, you know, usually people will buy calls and not puts because the overall sentiment is still bullish, right? You know, the propaganda is rate cuts, rate cuts, rate cuts, and rate cuts, okay. And this propaganda has been pumped in the market. So, of course, it's not the propaganda. Of, you know, they, they have been pumped in the market because the amount of uh, short sellers since 2020. Now, the hedge funds, you know, again, start to short the markets. I guess that is 35 per one. At you, every one long they have, they have like five shorts. And the majority of the assets that have been uh, shorted are the Magnificent 7. Why you guys have been seeing magnificent seven news going up? Because the amount of short sales. So anyway, bring it, back, bring it to 5,205 and you see a rejection. I really want to buy a put. A put okay? I really want to buy a put. 
But, of course, the safe trade for tomorrow is to have a straddle. Okay? So, deltas, you know, change a little bit. Now, 5,200 is not more the plus GX. They move to 5,225. 5,200 now a days has negative gamma. And that's where we have the major concentrated inputs. So, tend to be a support. Look that we have negative gamma at 5,210. But we have divergence because we have positive deltas. So that's a region that could be breaked easily. And, could, and consequently, if you break up 5,210, right, you could backtest 5,225. But the first you know, region that we look for is 5,205. Because as you can see nowadays, is where the majority of the calls are located. Okay, 5,205. So, first level of resistance, 5,205, that also match with the volatility skill. Breaking up 5,205, calls tend to be paid. Theta tend to burn premium in put. And the volatility skill tend to be changed from bearish to bullish. Okay? So, 5,205, that's the first level of resistance. Breaking up, I see a very easy break uh, up also 5,210 and could you take SPX up to 5,225 is where I'm willing to buy put contracts for XPX. Okay, uh, let's go back to the market wrap. So we already reviewed the gamma and the delta. So at the close, I mean, not yesterday, you know, the orders that caught my attention, one was the whole over of 5,775, 5, a Delta one order, that looks like that the whole over from yesterday up to April 11, the CPI day, that, you know, caught, caught my attention because the break even of the, the order is 5,206. And also this spread that printed for the same day, they print, uh, at uh, 9 something where market was trading at 5207 so the break even of this spread 5250 right down here this one 5250 spread you know the break even is 5208 of course they could be changed today if you know they bring markets up to 5225 but this caught my attention because expired tomorrow right expire tomorrow and my interpretation is that they were long right this is that that's something that caught my attention okay uh in two minutes after the close you know the uh the thinker swim suggests that someone sold 5220 calls and buy 5200 puts 200 contracts that was the suggestion because the colors but regarding the movement looks like that you know we going up right so far so far but you know is another order that you know also caught my attention so if you're going down today i'm not willing to buy calls and even puts i will just you know stay looking screen to see what's going going to happen at the cpi because dealers like to buy lower and sell high if they want to sink the market today to buy lower tomorrow, okay, you know, I you just want to look screen because I'm totally profitable and I don't want to, you know, uh, give part of my profits to the house. I really don't want to lose money. So I you wait, you know, another moment to enter long or to enter short. Nowadays, to be short, Pay much more premium than to be long. Hope you guys also understand that. Okay? So, those are the orders that caught my attention. Especially the 5,250 spread and the whole over of 5,775 call. Okay? Regarding, you know, a graph perspective, oh, uh, what, I, uh, what I said, XP, SPX is still trading inside Friday candle. The Friday candle cannot be considered as a pivot yet because we didn't lose the bottom. So it looks like that the setup for this week, 
as I told you at the beginning of this morning call, is something, the levels are something between 5,175 and 5,225 or 35. So looks like the setup is not to break down this bottom this week. That what, uh, that's my interpretation, okay? So looks like that this candle will not be confirmed as a pivot this week, okay? I highlighted this over here. Bearish, bearish, bearish signs in daily graph. MACD, MACD is bearish. Also, the day ADX is forming, is a process to form a bearish in loss. And the tricks is trying to point south. And also, SPX is trading below EMA8. Regarding, you know, the weekly graph, we don't have the same, the same indicators as we have in the day. But in the weekly graph, let me bring the weekly graph to the screen. We already start to trade below EMA3. Okay, EMA3 is located at 5,205. See, the EMA3 starts to point south. Of course, that's the faster EMA. Okay, the most, you know, the reversal, the real reversal start to when you see other ZMA like 8 and 20 start to point south too. But that's the beginning of the reverse. I'm not guaranteed that we, we will revert. We could you see a spike up again, okay? In the weekly graph. In the daily graph, you know, the indicators now is much more. The indicators already is, is bearish, okay? And we have been trading below EMA 8. Observe that, you know, the bullying bands in the weekly graph now, you know, start, you know, to close this bullish angle. So the bullish band in the upper, uh, upper band start to close as we have in the daily graph. Look how squeeze is right now. So a huge movement is being formed up or down up or down so far market is trading above the middle line of the bullying band if you analyze per bullying band it's still bullish if you analyze by indicators and emas is in a transition to be bearish but transitioning doesn't mean that we are bearish at all because the weekly graph so far didn't revert and in the daily graph the Friday candle is also not confirmed as a pivot yet. Okay? And the setup, at least for today, in my point of view, is to XPX trade or backtest 5,225. So, we will bring more euphoria to the market. And consequently, could you be also a trap? Anyway, since you already reviewed the graphic, as well, let's just finish the market, the morning call, just reviewing on oh, the volatility skewer spike at 5,205 at the pre-market. Looks like that people have been buying call at the open and consequently, you know, my call that we will see SPX back test 5,225 is materializing per what you have been seen in pre-market, okay? So, in the summary, uh, what I said, VIX dump it, as we highlighted the open, I mean, uh, at the beginning of this morning call. So, means that we tend to see a green day today, right? Uh, the, the minus GX is located at 5,275. The plus GX before was at 5,200. They moved up to 5,225, is where we, we expect the backtest and the rejection, and is where I'm willing to buy put, SPX put. Worst case scenario, if you break down 5,200, you'll be something between 75 and 80, but I don't think we will go there.
Okay? Enjoy your day. Take care. Pay attention to the levels. Review the levels. And as I said, I'm willing to buy puts as soon as PX backtest 5,225, especially today. Take care.